So 30 small peaches makes about nine cups of juice or 72 ounces. Boiling down the peaches, we're going to strain it through this colander into this bucket to collect the juice. We're going to take that juice with a smaller scale strainer, and strain that and save just the juice and we'll do that for jellies and for wine. If you're going to make jam or preserves, you're going to have to save some of the solids. You can also save some of the solids if you're going to put that in a nylon straining bag in the wine. That's your choice. You don't have to do that. So 36 cups of puree will make one gallon of juice. So I'm going to take these three and make wine from and then these two here I'll make jam and preserve from. That's good you want that especially for fermentation and this one has a lot more in it than these do. So I've already mixed in everything that I need because I only have one hand to film. So pectin enzyme, one tablespoon of pectin enzyme, one table, tablespoon of yeast nutrient, one tablespoon of yeast energizer, then we put uh, one and a half teaspoons of the acid blend, and then we have just a quarter teaspoon of the tannins, the wine tannins, and then I put one of the Camden tablets. Now that's a sulfate. It's to sterilize everything. I've already boiled all this, so it's sterilized. But anyway, it helps. So if you're allergic to sulfates, you can ignore this step, but you're going to have to sanitize everything. That's the reason I can most of my juice, so that I can use it any time and it's been sterilized. I don't have to worry about natural yeast in there that could mess up the process. But we're going to use natural yeast for this. Sometimes you want that. So let's go ahead and pour this in. So we've got three quarts or 12 cups of juice. And that's a straining bag that I have on there. Um, normally you'll want a white nylon straining bag. This blue one's fine. It hasn't ever changed any of the taste for me. I normally use a white one, but the other one was used in the last batch of wine. Let those drain out good. So we're gonna put four cups of sugar in there. So four cups of sugar. And I'm going to add in, I'm just going to use one of these to wash it out. This is distilled water. So there's four, four cups in a quart, so I'm just going to use that to measure out the water that I need. Actually, I may pour a little bit of in each one so I can wash these out and get all of the remaining. settlement out of those jars. I'll put just a little bit more in that one. Wash it out. More hard to have a little extra. But really just four cups of distilled water is what you're looking for. Now I haven't added in and I'm not going to until tomorrow but I haven't in, added in the natural yeast. I'll let this settle. Let that Camden tablet do its work. And then I'll put in, 24 hours later, I'll put in the natural yeast. All right, it's been about 24 hours since we put the juice and everything in it and the Camden tablets. That's really what we're waiting on. Now we're going to use the natural yeast. I'm just going to pour all the contents in there. There we go. Let that, and then I'll stir it a little bit. We'll put the top back on, put the blanket over it to allow it to breathe, and we'll let it ferment. I'll start once a day for about three to five days, just depending on how long it takes to ferment. And then I'll check the specific gravity. And if it's where I want it to be, normally about 1.040, then it is time to go into secondary fermentation. Fermentation has started, and this has been 24 hours since I put the yeast in, and I'll continue to stir this three to five days, 
before I put it into secondary fermentation.